gentlemen, a very warm welcome to you to yet another episode of Encounter. We have today Judy Johnson, a consultant and coach in the field of leadership development and organizational effectiveness from Canada. Judy Johnson, a very warm welcome to you and thank you, thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you, Russian. It's very nice to be here with you. So I believe uh, you're in Mauritius through an initiative from uh, Brahma Kumari. Mm -hmm. And uh, please tell us, how long have you been uh, following uh, Brahma Kumari? It's been about 18 years now since I first encountered this meditation practice. Um, yeah, 18 years. And how has it affected <coughs> your life? You know, when I first um, began to meditate, I was kind of a stressed out mom with a couple of little kids. <laughs> and I had a job that was pretty demanding. And, um, you know, I wasn't really fulfilled. And I was, um, uh, I think what the meditation did for me, it made me calmer. I mean, it was very loving with my children. Of course. But I was also quite frenetic. <laughs> I think it, it made me sort of calmer and cooler with the kids. And ultimately, both of these kids were raised while I was meditating. So they took a lot of benefit. They're very stable young women and they're very um, values-based and they're very sensible. So it made me a better mother. How, what, what did you mean by <clears throat> they were raised by meditation? Well, you know, I would go off and meditate after dinner every night because that was a regular practice and it seems nonsensical in a house with two kids as a single mom to go meditate after dinner. In Canada we call that the arsenic hour. <laughs> That's when <laughs> kids fall apart and all the tension they've had from the day they take out on each other and, and I would go and sit and meditate. It made no sense. And yet, you know, they got really quiet. And, and, and it would come a point within a couple of weeks where they'd say, Mom, it's seven o'clock, shouldn't you go meditate? So they got used to it? They got used to it. And I think the vibration in the house was very soothing. And they would bring all their friends home. And uh, not because we were the party house, but because Definitely somehow, not. <laughs> we weren't the party house, but somehow they always had such a nice time when they came to the house. So it would be very soothing for their souls. They would feel very relaxed at your place. Possibly. And also the knowledge, I think, from the meditation that, like one of them was a temper tantrum child. <laughs> and, you know, I would say to her, you know, oh, that storm passed, but you're still here after that storm. How are you doing? Well, there's the rainbow after the storm. Well, and it was like, she isn't the storm. <laughs> She's the soul, and no matter what emotion comes, She's still here even when it goes. And that gave her such a lifeline. It's like, you know, kids can get labeled as bad behavior. And instead, no, she's this beautiful soul who happens to be having a tantrum. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's yes. subtle, but it's really powerful. And they were raised on this, so. It was most probably a lesson to be learned for life. A definite life lesson. These are life skills that these girls have. And they notice that their peers do not have that life skill. It, it is said that uh, meditation helps the soul, helps the body, helps the mind, and even unlocking the powers of the mind. Mm. And clearly meditation plays a big part in your life. Mm. How did you start meditation? Hmm. I was a seeker. I went to a variety of different types of meditation. And then where I live, um, there's a Buddhist meditation center, which I love very much. But I found in that particular practice, the attempt was to empty the mind. And so when a thought comes, you say thought and you let it go. And I found that I was getting really bored with myself <laughs> and my own mind. And then somehow I discovered the Brahma Kumaris and I discovered, oh, I don't have to empty my mind. That is such good news. I actually just have to fill my mind with the energy of the soul. So a thought comes and I can redirect the thought to a more positive one or I can choose a thought because it makes me happy. And then I fill with that energy of happiness and then I'm full. And I mean, we know that nature abhors a vacuum. If my mind's empty, something's gonna come rushing in. And usually it'll be the, the you know, toxic energy of the world. 
And so instead, I discovered this works for me. I'd much, I'm a thinker. I'd much <laughs> rather be thinking, but let me pick my thoughts. So uh, coming back to meditation, a lot of people find it very difficult to empty their minds for meditation. Mm -hmm. So you're saying you don't have to clear your mind. Mm -hmm. All right, let's say I'm meditating. Mm -hmm. I have a thought that comes into my mind. What do I do with that thought? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a couple options. Um, you can do battle with that thought and try and get rid of it. That doesn't work. I guarantee you'll lose it every work. time. It doesn't exactly. work. It doesn't work. Exactly. So instead, you notice that thought and you choose an alternative thought. Okay, look, I'm all worried about the kids, but I am a peaceful soul. And a peaceful soul sparkles and it's bright and it's full of light. And instantly I've talked myself through my thoughts <gasps> into a better place. And that place is full and rich and I get absorbed in that. And then that other little thought, it doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> so uh, during meditation, I'm right into it. I have a thought coming through. Do I discard the thought and go back to, to, to my meditation of being empty? Or do I go with the flow and try to find a meaning to the thought? Oh, I don't think so, Rush. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think any, if your mind touches a thought, the thought will stick to it. Of course. And we see this in neuroscience. We're learning a lot from neuroscience, right? They say, when you have a thought, um, your neurons fire up. Of course. Right? And then an electron jumps from the synapse to another synapse, and we essentially wire our brain. So every thought creates a firing up in the brain, and it fires together, wires together. As so part my of the neuro subconscious mind. Yeah, my neurocircuitry of my brain is wiring according to that thought. That's why most of us feel, we don't feel anymore that we have a thought. The thought has me. That's right? interesting. That's the feeling. And instead, we're rewiring. We're going, every time we fire apart, we wire apart as well. So when I interrupt that, and I go, yep, over here, I fire and wire together a different thought in the synapses and the neural circuitry. Is it true to say that when you are praying, you talk to God, but during meditation when you have a thought, it's God talking to you? Well, let me say I'm listening to God, or I'm tuning in to God's frequency. He doesn't always talk to me anyways, but I can pick up the vibe, and it's a different vibe than my own vibe, and it's definitely a different vibe than the world. So probably in the beginning, it's a little bit harder but you do get used to picking up uh, the vibes and the signs so for someone who's not used to meditation who's not really convinced about unlocking the powers of the mind what would you say to that person carry on how would you <laughs> how, how would you start meditation um well, like with you, for instance, I asked you a question earlier. I could ask you a different one now. Like if I were to say to you, Russian, remember one of the best moments of your life. It's quite meaningful. You could do that, right? Could you pick one? No. A nice time you've had recently. Yes, definitely. Could you? Yes. And could you go into that memory even as we sit here? You could begin to think about it. Yes. Like you could see the people, you could remember what it felt like. No people, but I can feel You're it. on your own and you could just feel the experience again. All right, so what you've just done is you've activated a memory. Yes. Right? And that memory end is now filling your mind and you're feeling nice inside. It, 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 there's, there's, there's an emotion which, which you can feel, definitely. The purpose of a thought really is to carry us to a feeling. So right. that's why we, it's like we ride the magic carpet of a thought to a destination, which is the feeling, right? So if you remember something positive, the feeling comes out again. And our basic understanding is that the original memory of the soul, the original blueprint, spiritual blueprint, is, is all the positive qualities. Peace, love, bliss, happiness, power. And I just can't remember that because I'm stuck. My mind is full of all this other stuff. So all I want to do is access that memory and I have a thought and it awakens that memory. Before you know it, I'm filled with that feeling. It's over and above the things you have to do in your daily life. 
Yes, I bring that energy to the things I do in my daily life. And it does affect everything you do around? It affects everything I do. Can you give me an example? Well, give me your pen, please. Mm -hmm. And now give it to me again with love. Please. I don't know if I've done it right. Was there love in it? Do it again then with love. <laughs> Judy, here's your pen, please. I know, that didn't work. <laughs> yeah, I that felt I felt nice feeling there though. I could do better. <laughs> That's okay, don't be so hard on yourself. Don't I be so do hard better. on yourself. That was lovely. But it was different than the first time, right? Most of the day we go around like doing this. And instead, if we just reposition in a, a lovely energy, and we put that energy into the action. So putting a thought into the action. changes everything, yeah. And it changes everything. It makes it more lovely, right? Imagine if we put that energy into all of our actions. We are putting energy into our actions anyways. But we're doing it blindly. Yeah, so why not be conscious? Be mindful of that, be aware, and choose the energy I put in. And then the ripple effect of that energy creates a really nice atmosphere around me, in my world, in my relationships. I want to improve all of those things. That's why I'm meditating. I'm not escaping the world. I'm actually bringing better energy to the world. Is it true that uh, your breathing does affect your thoughts and meditation? I think so. And your actions eventually? I think so, because when we're stressed and we have worry thoughts, our breathing slows, or it stops, right? It speeds up, it's exactly. really shallow, it's really short. And when I'm sitting here and I'm aware of the kind of inner peace that is within me, all of a sudden my, my breath is deeper, it's slower, the energy of my body is um, not racing anymore. I think so, so it helps for health also. You mentioned earlier about the spiritual blueprint. <laughs> Please define what's the spiritual blueprint. I'm quite lost myself. No, oh dear. Well, I think blueprint is a metaphor for a building, right? So a, a, an architect would draw a blueprint and then somehow we would see that building over there that looks like this, right? So it's the original plan. So if you think about the blueprint in the soul, um, it means whatever I create is a direct expression of my own qualities, right? The energy yes. that I put into my world. So you can look at my world and it's a mirror of me. It's a reflection of me because it's my creation, my home, my wardrobe, my relationships. You are what you think. I am what I think and the world I create is a reflection of what I think. So in a way, everything I do is an expression of the blueprint of the soul. But the original blueprint, let's say that over time, a long period of time, those lines of the blueprint get a bit blurred, some of them get erased, some of them get crossed out, you know, <laughs> let's say. And then I look at my world and it's a bit off, you know, it's not quite that perfect uh, blueprint I was thinking. Yes. And so that's kind of what happens to the soul. But before all that blurring and erasing and damaging of the paper, um, it was pure was the original blueprint was clean, it was clear, the lines were elegant, and uh, my expression reflected that. That's fantastic. And I just want to come back to that. All of us are longing to be our best. Judy, I'm going to stop you now. Okay. But let's keep some for the next episode. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Please tune in next week for yet another episode of Encounter.